everybody, welcome back to the next episode of Seen on Screen with Ned Howley. Uh, with me still, for his second time on the show, is Dashiell Driscoll. And we are going to be discussing the 25 most controversial movies of all time, according to movies.go.com. And it's a controversial list in itself. But um, you know, I, just, I think it's worth discussing anyway. Wait, just side note, whether it's worth discussing, it's actually movies.com. I think the .go.com is just some, I mean, I'm looking at the top logo. It's but just the URL at the bottom. I know, I know, but I'm go just, network. yeah, this is the Go Network, um, which is a lot like um, other networks. I don't know, I'm just throwing it out there in case anyone's confused at home. <laughs> wow, now people are going to write in. They always write in. Yeah, anyway, number one on the list, Natural Born Killers. Oliver Stone's uh, film from 94, 95 maybe? Um, yes, from 94. Nine, 1994. Uh, it's controversial for purely ultra-violent reasons, I think. It's, uh, it was a pretty mainstream movie for how, like, unbelievably violent it was. It was unbelievably violent, and it was unapologetically violent, is I think what makes it so controversial. It um, was violent for commentary's sake, I believe. And for fun, say. Quentin Tarantino did the original script, uh, mm -hmm. apparently, here. And, the movie uh, was so over the top though that I don't even think it deserves to be considered controversial because it was like sort of reflexively violent you know it wasn't like violent it was for shock factor but it was also in like a reflexive way you know it was like they almost almost made the scene where like Rodney Dangerfield is like the the creepy molesting dad mm -hmm. but they have like some 50s music going they almost made that a not terrifying scene you know I'm not gonna say it was like funny but it was almost like I could sit through this this is I can see this being a show on the 50s. I mean, yeah, 50s. I think it was... <laughs> well, maybe not that far. That's a bit I mean, hard. it was a product of a lot of hype, I think. And maybe a more conservative time, 94. If the movie had come out today, it probably would not have been met with so much fierce controversy. It'd probably be called, like, a, like splatter porn. It'd probably be up there with, like, Saw. Yeah. Is that it? Splatter porn? Um, torture what? porn. Torture porn. Splatter porn is another kind of porn. That is actually porn. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole nother What you show. do in your private life? I, yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, yeah. We're not here to talk about it. Anyways, number two. Number two, Midnight Cowboy. I think it's a classic film. I love it. I think it's great. I don't even, I didn't find it all like at all. It's controversial because there's like some psychedelic drug use in the end and there's some homosexual undertones, but there's a lot of movies from back in the 70s that have a homosexual undertones and from before that. Well, that's racist. And also, this is from 1969. Um, you know. Sorry. It's okay. Summer of summer of love, I guess. Uh, but I don't. I've never seen this movie, so I can't comment. Well, then you shouldn't. Moving uh, right along, I guess. <laughs> uh, have you seen number three? Uh, screw number three. I never saw. It. Did you? Me neither. No. A Birth of a Nation is number four. You don't need to say what number three is. Oh, <laughs> it's not. You know what? I think if people they know the website, and if anyone wants to do their research, we're not even. The URL. Uh, the URL is uh, movies.go.com slash feature. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you know, just, it just we're gonna link it. We're gonna link it. We're gonna we're gonna hot link I'm it. gonna flash it on the on the on the. Bam, bam, bam. Um, number four, Birth of a Nation. That's controversial. Super also controversial. Also completely unwatchable. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's not enjoyable to watch, and not even because of this the horribly racist yeah. undertone or not racist undertones, horribly racist content. It's just not a, a well done movie. You know, the narrative's well, poor. Well, I mean, it's uh, it was way ahead of its time. For it, what? Because it was like super racist. I think that was like no, about because right of the, the narrative time. structure and a lot of the film techniques that were used. Is that why we had to learn about it? It came out like classes? 1915, man. This, this is the birth of this is the birth of cinema, much less the birth of a nation. Oh, you know what? Well, yeah. Um, First bad movie. But it's movie. also like three hours long and insanely boring. It's wow. It's three hours long. You watch it fast forwarding throughout the entire thing, you get the gist of it. Trust me. Um, moving right along. Moving right along. We'll skip the next few because I've never seen them. Let's go right to South Park at number nine. Okay. Why not? Um, I just want to say that I, I think Movies.com did a great job of including uh, Alex from A Clockwork Orange, the kids from South Park, and Hitler in their <laughs> banner for the 25 most controversial movies. I would um, never expect that. I that not the first time I've seen uh, all of them together in the same image. Anyways, it seems like kind of a conservative list. You wonder who's writing it because I don't know. Well, anyway, I mean, South Park is, um, I, I don't even think it, I don't see what's so controversial about it. I think if you saw any episode of the show at all, you would know what you're getting into, walking into a movie theater uh, with South Park on the marquee. I think a lot of this list is pretty subjective. 
Oh, I mean, I mean, I just lists don't. are subjective, you know what I'm saying? That is the whole point. I don't, I don't know why the internet used this stuff up. You could put a top ten list of anything, it would get. How popular. do you feel about the titty cut follies? Thank you for. I thought you never asked. That's number eleven, folks. In case you're reading the along. Titty at home. Cut the titty cut follies. It is a follies. documentary. Do you want to spell that out, or should I? I can spell it out. Documentary. Uh, T I T I C U T <laughs> space that. F O L L I E S. Titty cut. And I just want to stress that there is, it's about, I guess it's a documentary about prison and prisoners getting treated badly. These are men. Um, the title is horribly misleading. I rented this film after reading this list, was deeply disappointed. I wish I would have downloaded it and then deleted it instantly. It was it's not, like naked not, lunch. There's wow. no titties in there. No, no, no one's naked. No one's eating lunch. This is bullshit. It's bullshit. Um, cruising, number 13. If you haven't seen Cruising, you must do so immediately. If you want to see a 1970s Al Pacino or maybe early 80s Al Pacino. Um, 1980. 1980 Al Pacino in S&M, homo, the most homoerotic Al Pacino movie I think I've ever seen. That and Son of a Woman, heat. maybe. I just saw Heat the other day. There's some stuff going on there. It's subtle. It's subtle. Definitely. It's but that was number 13 if anyone's reading <laughs> along still. So. Heat is an incredible movie. That's good um, what about Passion of the Christ? I mean, that's an easy choice. That's a snuff movie. A it's, good snuff movie. It's a good snuff movie. I thought it was beautifully shot, actually. I thought there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, admirable things about Passion of the Christ. I, mean, I, had, I had trouble really paying attention because I watched it on a, on an overseas uh, flight. It was a mm-hmm. movie on an airplane. I had trouble paying attention. You did not see Passion of the Christ on an airplane. I was wondering if you catch me on that. I did not see it. They would never. Oh, they'd show Die Hard 2 on an airplane before Passion of the Christ. Yeah, really. Um... um Triumph of the Will. That's a movie starring... What's the big deal? Yeah. Come on. Adolf Hitler on screen. Not someone playing Adolf Hitler. This is just, this is really this Adolf, is just Hitler. Adolf G.D. Hitler. It's worth taking a look at. Um, Lenny Riefenstahl was a very talented, if deranged, filmmaker. Um, she was totally, mm-hmm. you know, blackballed for the rest of her career. But she was very talented. She was a pioneering female filmmaker. Happened to be a was. Nazi... Might have set women back. She's still alive. She's still alive? She's like 100 years old. No way. Yeah. Lenny Riefenstahl, wow. We should, uh, we should have her on the show if we can find her. <laughs> Ask her about she, she's I am extending an invitation, Lenny, if you're out there Let's and just, you're watching. Yeah. We'll, we'll, please we'll come pay on the show. for your lunch and your travel. I can get you money. into the dining hall for $5. You just got to hop the wall. And or go free. Through the outdoor patio. Door. We'll get you. We'll get you wheelchair accessible accommodations. Oh, she's probably she. I mean, she's yeah, probably she's, she's probably, probably old, doing though. sprints still. She was. She had a lot of juice lighting. Oh, you know what? That is. Just, we know how uh, good they are at uh, at athletics. Um, uh, I'm, I'm gonna just, go ahead and say the rest of the list isn't that important. Rest of the list is. You know, this whole list is pretty stupid. I'm just gonna say it. I'm sick of reading movies.com. Stop it. Because yeah. all you're trying to do. This is the first these, time I've ever been to that website. You know, I'm, no, I'm, I'm seriously sick of this crap. And, like, a lot of websites <laughs> do this. You're just trying to make lists to get ad revenue, and it's bogus. And you need to stop it because I'm sick of it. And you put your, like, 25-thing lists on, like, six different pages. It means you get six page loads every time someone wants to read a list. It's bullshit. Disney All right? The Go yeah, well, Disney, I'm sure about 15 of your movies are on DVD in this list. It's viral marketing. That's eh? viral marketing. That's viral marketing for you. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up with Vincent Gallo in The Brown Bunny. Is number 25. He gets a blowjob, a uh, real blowjob, not one of those fake movie blowjobs that no one likes. Wow. A uh, real blowjob in the movie, and um, which would be awesome, but uh, apparently the movie sucks otherwise. And I don't really want to see Vincent Gallo getting a blowjob. I want to see that about as much as I want to see Stu getting a blowjob. Hmm. You heard it here. I heard it here. Uh, that's uh, it for this episode this week. We had a very silly week on Scene on Screen. Um, but a fun week. A fun week. Fun. I enjoyed it. It's April now. April Fools. Today was April 1st. We're not. Please, you kids out there in, in TV land, in internet land, be on my show. Email me, C. Hallaby, basically Chalaby uh, at pizza.edu, and let's get together and have some fun. We'll see you next time.